Hey folks, Dee here, and welcome to this episode of Glam for the Gown. This is where I design a unique makeup look for a specific ballroom dress. I'll discuss a little bit how I design the look, and then I'll demonstrate how to apply it. And it's not just the eyeshadow, but also the lip too. If you love fun looks like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, stay tuned afterwards for the meet and greet with the dress. The dress I have here with me today is Painted Pose, and this is by Designs to Shine. It's a beautiful, smooth dress. And as you can see, it has this beautiful printed chiffon that I'm gonna use to create this look that I'm wearing. We've also got some minimal stoning here, which I'm gonna take into account when thinking about glitter and placement, and I'll kind of walk you through it as I go along. You can do this look yourself, or you can take it to your favorite makeup artist. So let's get started. So now I've just got my basic face on, and after the eyeshadow, I'll talk about some highlighter, I'll talk about some blush, and then I'll talk about the lip. And what I'm gonna do for every single one of these gowns is I'm going to have a chill lip, and the adventurous option will be something maybe a little bit more adventurous. So again, like I said in the intro, I kind of took some inspiration from this beautiful painted chiffon here. We have a whole bunch of different colors to work with, right? So you can see, I feel like I'm, poke, I'm peeking up above, like a little bed sheet, like a tiny child. But you can see that there's places where the patterns cut in and out of each other, like there's slices, there's almost like little wings in them. And every color, like there's points where there's a triangle, or you have this multiple lines or intersections, you have this brown, you have the orange, you have the green, you have something that's kind of actually hidden in here, which is the yellow. And I really want to splash this yellow. So I'm gonna use all of these colors. I'm gonna use some of these harsh lines. So we're actually gonna do a cut crease look. And that'll kind of give us that really like dimension that'll match the fabric. Also, the base color of the dress is very, very green. And so I'm gonna stay away from green a little bit as far as the base of the shadow goes because I want the dress to really take the green cake, you know? And I wanna bring out some of these other colors like the white I wanna highlight. I wanna highlight this really beautiful warm yellow undertone orange that has almost a rusty look to it. And then kind of, I actually wanna bring out the browns. So we'll do some cool stuff with that and we'll add some glitter and then you can spice it up any way that you want. You could subtract something or, you know, if you don't feel comfortable doing a cut crease, it's super easy to turn it into just a basic lid, crease shadow, transition shade look. So there's a number of ways that you can do it, but I'm gonna show you the extreme way. Extreme? I don't know if it's extreme, the full shebang, the whole hog. No, no one wants to be called a hog. The hog in your dress, no. The full tilt. All right, anyway, first things first, let's do that primer. Just gonna use my little Bedellium primer brush. Now we have the primer on, and the important thing is remember, get some primer that's a little bit lighter than your skin tone or a little bit lighter than your tan. Especially for this look, we're gonna use a couple different types of primer. So for my transition shade, I'm gonna use this guy. This is Zephyr by Urban Decay. You can also use uh, their one that's called Blonde. Mainly, I want something that is not sparkly and doesn't have too heavy of a shimmer because I'm going to be using matte shadows on a lot of this. I'm gonna take this pencil brush, get a little bit on there, and then just fill from the inner corner up under my brow. So it should look pretty pale. 
But again, that's kind of setting the base for this. So these neck shadows I'm gonna use from the Tribe. I really, really like Juvia's as far as their palettes because they're always super colorful and they always have a really nice color story to them. So we're gonna use a couple of these shadows. And you can see it looks really good with the dress. So we're gonna take some of this guy and we're going to put it up here right along that ridge. So right on your orbital. And we're gonna put it about, about to where our brow connects and then outwards. So I'm just gonna kind of pat it in. blend it up just a little bit. Now, here comes the really fun part, but also probably the hardest part. We're gonna do the cut crease now. A cut crease is where we have this base color, but then we're going to put a very strict, very harsh line of primer again over the lid and so it's cutting the crease this is where the name comes from and we're also gonna add some liner in there so just hang on and it's gonna look it's gonna look a lot worse before it looks a lot better so just hang in there so now I'm gonna use my P Louise base and this is shade zero so this is the white Control is everything. I'm gonna get it mostly on the tip for now. I'm gonna look down and I'm going to draw a half moon over to about here. It's okay if there's a little bit of color on it. I'm gonna do this one eye at a time because that way the primer isn't sticky. It doesn't roll up into my eyeball and then get shadow all over it. So we're gonna put some shadow over it and then I'll quickly do it to the other side. So hang in there. So now on this inner corner, I'm gonna take that same palette and I'm gonna use this guy. And I'm going to do a little bit and I'm going to start putting it on the crease part. You wanna use a small dense brush for a lot of control. Now I'm gonna go back and forth between two palettes. I'm gonna also use uh, Afrique, I think. Is it French? I don't know, but it's another one by Juvia's. And again, it's really, really pigmented, super beautiful, very colorful. And I'm gonna use this here to start blending into the middle. Back to the tribe. small brush and then I'm just gonna blend it a little bit how's my sweet boy today 
Now that this color is on, I'm just going to do it quickly to the other side. So that's one kind of difficult part over with. Now we're gonna do another one. We're going to use a gel liner. This does take some practice, but like anything else, it's worth it. This is Inglot. Along with this thing, also from Inglot, it's called Duraline. This is the best way to waterproof any sort of gel product you use. If it's a liner, if it's an eyeshadow, you put a drop of this in this. You mix it in the cap. Now you have liner that's really gonna stay. So we're gonna do a wing and then we're gonna do You can always shape it at the end with another fine line brush. I like to use this type of liner versus just the pencil liner. Anytime I need the line to be the feature, as I need the line to be very, very clear. Now, I'm going to take the black liner and I'm actually going to do a second wing right along this crease. okay if it's not perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna do a couple other 
clear white lines. I'm gonna take that same primer base, I'm gonna add some Duraline, and then I'm gonna do a white line above my first black one. Bob Ross, Happy Little Accidents. Every time I do that, I feel like Sahara Davenport. Today I'm just going to use the Lancome uh, Drama Liner. So now we have our nice big wide eyes. I'm going to put a little bit of white eyeshadow on it just to set it. It's really great to use eyeshadow to set any type of gel that you use. That's why I put a little bit of eyeshadow on the white liner, and it's why if your black liner isn't setting, you can always put a little bit of black eyeshadow on it. Sometimes I recommend black eyeshadow depending on the look you're doing, otherwise I might actually recommend using like a face setting powder to do it. Now underneath my eye, I'm going to use some brown. I'm going to use this shadow and this one. You can see they work really well with the dress. Alright, now we have shadow around the whole eye. Now, I have some small creases underneath my eyes because they're very almond shaped and they're small and I have big cheekbones which kind of, if I smile, squishes it all up. Which means that the gel liner, the Inglot, is actually going to be a little bit tougher to put on. So I, for this, I'm going to recommend either a pencil liner, such as the fine liner, or I recommend a brush liner. Now, for a little bit of a wing, I'm going to use my brush liner and just add a little tick to the sides, and then you can also optionally add a little tick to the bottom as well. Now, this is fab. We're going to add a little bit of highlight and then we're going to add optional glitter. So for highlight, I'm going to add it in two places, and I'm going to use two different highlighters just because I want to be that extra. First one I'm going to use is this one. This is Ofra Cosmetics uh, with Nikki Tutorials, and this one is called Glazed Donut. I love this one. It's super bright white, and that's what I want in my inner corner. If you only want to use one highlighter, use this one on your inner corner and underneath your brow. Oh, I love that look of the really highlighted center of the face. It really makes all this other color explode. The other highlighter I want to use is actually the Jeffree Star. This is Summer Snow Cone. 
This is a really fun, it's a really fun, ah, golden orange highlight. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it, this one is gonna go up underneath my brow. Yes, ugh. Oh. This is a really nice compliment to the orange that you have there. So Diamond Girl here is a really beautiful white glitter with silver in it. And I use that to kind of match the uh, crystal AB stones that are used here on the white parts of the chiffon. And like how the stones are just in these ribbons kind of highlighting the different colors, that's kind of how I want to use the glitters. I just want to use it in little lines to highlight and accent the color to draw your eye to it. So that's what I'm going to use. We're just going to use the Daily Wear base. Yeah, very small, but just very simple. Next, I'm gonna do two more little ribbons of color, but I'm going to blend the yellow into the green. The two I wanna use are, again, they're lit, and we have Lemon Tart and Green Machine. I'm gonna do Lemon Tart first. Always put your caps on. All right. Looking pretty good. I really like it. Looks like the chiffon. Let me just pop some lashes on and we'll get to that meet and greet. <sighs> so much better. Love the big pair of lashes. There's nothing like the feeling of it. Like, like a little hat for your eyeballs. Very fashionable little hat. So the lip for this, like I said, I'm gonna do a chill look, which is something that can work for anybody, but I'm also gonna do kind of an adventurous one. Some of these might be a little bit more extreme than others for different dresses, depending on the dress, of course. But for this one, it's actually gonna be a variation on the same lipstick. This guy is Clinique. This is even better pop series of the nude lipsticks that they have. And this is number 22, Nuzzle. And as you can see, it's kind of a very neutral brown. It almost has a little bit of a gray tint to it. And so that's what I'm trying to match here is sort of these beautiful grayish browns. And again, because you have a really loud eye on, that's kind of where I wanna keep it. So let me just slap a coat of paint on. Okay, there we are. So this lip, as you can see, it goes really nicely with the dress. And so like I promised, the adventurous lip, this is our chill lip, the adventurous lip is gonna be a variation on this and it's actually gonna be the simplest variation that you have. You're just gonna add glitter. Rhinestone cowboy by Lit. It's one of my favorite glitters because it's brown but it has this holographic sparkle in it. Oh look at that. Oh so good. And we're just gonna take our finger, we're gonna tap it, and then we're just gonna press it into the lip. Don't roll your lips after it.
How fun is that? And so now you have a little bit of sparkle here and it's probably gonna be one of the sparklier things on you considering how minimal the stoning is. And this, it doesn't draw attention away from the dress. It more gives a center point between your eyes and the dress. So like here's a little bit of a highlight. So that's why you can wear this with the glitter or without. It's really easy. And it's a super easy thing to apply. It's a super easy thing to reapply, which is another consideration. And you can very easily try both and figure out which one you like. Or it's a great variation to have, like if you're doing one look for heats and you're doing another for, say, some sort of scholarship. You can just change it up and it's a little extra punch. And I've known a lot of judges who love a sparkly lip. So feel free to play with it. Find out what works for you. And maybe one day you'll start loving glitter too. But now, let's get to that meet and greet with this beautiful lady right here. All right, now for the meet and greet. Let's get to know this dress a little bit and you can think about if this is a great dress for you or if you want something a little similar or maybe you'll learn something about it that you didn't know before. And what's really great is a lot of these dresses, there's such beautiful pieces of art that you can look at it every day and every day still discover something new. So let's maybe find some of those, huh? So first, we're looking at this. Again, it has this really beautiful chiffon and it has all these ribbons of color. And this is a great way to maybe do something a little bit different if you're someone who really likes solids or jewel tones. Like, this is a great way to catch attention. Maybe if your dancing has taken a new turn and you want to start saying something a little bit new. We have this really beautiful pleating here. And these ribbons, because they come from here and move down this way, it makes the dress look like it's moving even when it's standing still. So this is a great way to create motion. Maybe if you're not happy with the amount of motion, like maybe in your rib cage that you're getting in smooth just yet, or maybe you really want to accentuate the motion that you do have, this is a great way to do it. So we also have a slit on the left side, which means that you can kick a leg through, and you can also pull up the skirt and swish it a lot, because now you can actually pull it up to reveal that leg. How fun is that? This type of neckline, is really nice for ladies who feel like they're a little small on top. This deep V, along with these kind of pointed shoulders, will really give you a little bit of volume. So the back here is interesting because this is where we have the most stones. So if you're doing smooth and you have a lot of closed position choreography or sequences, this is great. This will show your back really, really nicely so not all the stoning is hidden in the front. This type of cage structure where you have these pinches here but you have these vertical uh, elastics here, this will give you the look of maybe not looking too tiny on top again, kind of like the front does. So if you're kind of a pear-shaped lady and you feel like you have small shoulders, small chest, and maybe kind of a thinner back, this will maybe even you out a little bit. It's a great tool for that. What a fun dress. Oh, and you've got some renewed illusion here. Well, Painted Pose is awaiting for its next mama. So come and get her, folks. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today on this episode of Glam for the Gown. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of these. If you have dress suggestions or recommendations, leave it in a comment. I want to thank Brent Mills again for his contribution to the music for my channel. He has the Ballroom playlist and the Music Mills software, and it's all linked down in the description. I want to thank Carly again for all of her amazing editing and tech help. She's a genius. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Couldn't do it without you. And so make sure you come back soon and get your daily dose of vitamin D. It's good for you. Have a wonderful day, guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.